Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing good today. So um, I've kind of taken a break off of social media. I needed my rest. Um, I was kind of under the weather. But I'm back today with a solo video, and I hope this video finds you guys well. So I want to talk about this situation. I've been wanting to talk about it for a while, but I want to see how the chips fail. So if you guys do not know, Meg Thee Stallion and her long-term stylist, EJ, they had fallen off, okay? And for those of y'all who don't know who EJ is, um, EJ first came to my attention about two three years ago he was one of the guys that always hung around Tamar Braxton when Tamar Braxton was filming her show with Vince so he was always you know there with her hairstylist James and you know they would crack jokes and they would get on camera let me go ahead and refresh your memory y'all go ahead and check this out hey, I got unbraid these. whoever did her hair the shade of it all bitch <laughs> what can I put on my scalp oil I got coconut oil in my hair we bake. We getting fried chicken on my head. And I got vinegar. I got apple cider vinegar. Vinegar. It literally helps. Big Mama said in the Bible, use apple cider vinegar. You understand? All right, so you guys just saw EJ, honey, in the confessional with them clean-ass French braids. Yes, honey, I was here for that hairstyle. So that is EJ. So EJ's been doing his thing for a while. He's definitely made a name for himself long before he ever connected with Megan. Um, he's been a stylist for Kelly Rowland, um, a bunch of people, honey. Y'all can check out his resume. So anyways... Out of nowhere, back on October 5th, EJ decided to make this loud, horrible video, honey. He was in his car, had the, you know, the drop top down. Pro tip, EJ, next time you want to rant and rave and tell your side of the story, please roll up all the windows. Make sure your audio's on point. I hate excess noise when I just want to hear the point of the story. So anyways, he's on there and basically he decided to explain to the world, <laughs> nobody, nobody at all. Here comes EJ. And he wanted to tell folks why him and Megan were parting ways. And basically he says this was a mutual decision and that he's no longer going to be working with her professionally and that he wants to work on his own brand. So y'all go ahead and check this out and I'll be right back. I want to do more TV. I want to do more for me. I want to do more for my brand. I don't want to work under somebody. I don't need, I don't want to ever feel like people can make you feel like what you do for them or in their life is disposable. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're a hairstylist, a makeup artist, a stylist, PR, man, whatever it is, you know, when you work for people personally, sometimes they like to forget that you're your own person and what you do for them is a service. So sometimes they think the services you do for them are no longer needed. And that's it. All I can do is be my genuine self. All I can do is be my loving self. All I can do is bring light to people while I'm in their life. And once I'm gone, then hopefully somebody else can pick up the light and be it. But other than that, that's it. So, Megan would never, I want people to not get this misunderstood. It will, it will always be a mutual understanding for why I no longer am a part of something. That's it. I wish Megan the best. I wish Brooklyn the best. I'm styling her. I wish her team the best. I don't know what's going on with Kelsey, so I want everybody to have action about Kelsey. That is it. <laughs> That's it. Everybody I've ever worked with has come has come to a point to where it was like this is this is it. This is the moment All right, so you guys just heard what EJ had to say. So like I said, that was about five weeks ago. So when I saw that video, I'm like, well, hmm, interesting. It seems like Meg is always losing friends or people around her, people falling back from her. Is it Meg? Is it her energy? Is it them? You know, what is it? You know, but I didn't think too much about it. 
And then Cardi B had her party, uh, I think like a week after EJ's video on October 12th. And EJ was there. Megan was there. JT, the City Girls was there. Young Miami was there. Honey, everybody was there. And so Jason Lee went on to his show to spill some tea, honey. And basically, Jason Lee was saying that Meg Thee Stallion and JT of the City Girls got into it with EJ. And it was like really crazy. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this video of Jason Lee. Check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Guess what, baby? The two of them ran into each other at the party. And I'm going to tell you this. And I'm telling you this as a firsthand observer. I love to drink. I haven't drank a lot in the last several months because, as you know, I've had surgery. I've had all types of other things and COVID and everything. And I haven't had nowhere to go. But I did sip a little during the party. And alcohol was flowing throughout the entire party. There were liquor, there was bottles at every table. There was no bar because of COVID, but everybody that came in with their mask and sat down in their table with their people in their bubble had their alcohol. Baby, when I tell you that she sees EJ in the party and she, from what I heard, I didn't see this part, but she flips him off from across the room. So EJ's like, what's up? And he's talking to her, whatever. So she comes over to EJ, and all I see is all this, right? All it is in the face or whatever. And EJ's trying to explain himself, and they having a conversation. She's doing all this. And mind you, like, we all have security. I have security. Everybody has security. There's security everywhere. And they this, 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 and this. Megan was drunk as hell and super aggressive, and she's a big girl. She's a big girl, and when you got a big girl standing over you doing and EJ's big. He's tall. So they doing all this. Baby out of nowhere, JT from the City Girls runs over and she's all up in EJ's face and she's trying to get him. So security is pulling her back. Okay? So security is pulling her back. So apparently JT was trying to step in for Megan and she was trying to check EJ because from what I heard she said was she was telling him she didn't like the fact that he was online talking shit about Megan. Now, I didn't know that Megan and the City Girls were cool like that. I think we have a picture of them at the party. I don't know. I didn't know that they were cool. Now, apparently, my photographer got this picture of them and Tommy. Hey, Tommy, because I'm going to tell you about how Tommy and JT almost got in a fight next. All right, so, yes. Yeah, me and City Girls up. When I saw the City Girls and JT, everybody pointed out that JT's face was looking very, like, non-trustworthy. All right. So JT, I believe, had too much to drink. All right. So you guys just heard what Jason Lee had to say. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, heard what he had to say, but they weren't sure if he was being sincere, if he was just trying to be messy. You know, folks was kind of confused. Well, now EJ is speaking out. And he's basically telling his side of the story. And he wants people to know that, you know, he was not trying to fight any women. He's just trying to, you know, be himself. He's just trying to, you know, do his own thing. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out EJ's most recent interview that he did yesterday um, with Street TV. Y'all go ahead and check this out. And, and to everybody was faded at, at, at Cardi's party. I'm not a huge drinker, so I was a little more, you know, calm or whatever. But everybody was faded. I know when... Uh, Megan is faded. I know how passionate and um, uh, animated Megan is when she's talking. And so, you know, to the party, it could have looked like something crazier. Um, with us, with us talking, it did become a lot. It did, you know, JT may have thought it was something more too when JT, because JT had ended up running over and right. kind of in between us. And you know, I don't know JT, and I, 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 I love Miami, and I. From the city girls, right? Yeah, and I, I respect the city girls. I don't, I have no issues. I want people to understand this so much. I I have no issues with no females. I don't want to have a, a war with a bunch of girls, you know, like that's not what that was. So even at the party, I love you. It ain't no drama. And then part of me, you know, didn't want to talk and engage a whole lot at all because there were people in the room and there were a lot of people in the room that I just didn't want to make or, or make the wrong impression of what was going on interpretation of our conversation and unfortunately it did get it did get a lot more animated than i wanted it to be and, and i woke up the next day to a damn video no a viral video ej king got a tube with megan the style i mean it was just everywhere so everybody's like well, what is really going on so we haven't yeah. we're definitely not going to hear about don't, I don't know JT. I don't know her. She, I know she's, you know, cool with Megan, and I, she, maybe she thought she was coming in to, 
you know, help Megan out, but it, it wasn't that. I never. Oh, she didn't want to fight you, though. She, JT came between us and she kind of like pushed me back and was like, <laughs> and she had her, she said what she said. And I was like, ma'am, I don't know. I just don't know you. I, I understand what you're doing, but that's. All right. So you guys just heard what EJ had to say about the situation. And I will say that I felt like he was being very respectful in the interview, you know, trying to be neutral. But again, um, you know, if you're trying to be professional and you don't want any problems, you're not going to keep bringing stuff to social media. And I know a lot of people are saying that it seems like everybody's trying to get clout off of Megan. Everybody's trying to, you know, get famous. And that's one thing that I've noticed in the industry is that people don't know how to play their positions anymore. And I think that's the problem. And that also includes managers, publicists, hairstylists, fashion stylists, all that stuff. It's like now because of Instagram and social media, they too want to be the celebrity. And I think that's where a lot of that clashes. Because one thing about being a celebrity, it comes with a lot of... It comes with a big ego, okay? So when you are the said celebrity, you are the singer, you are the rapper, you are the movie star, you start to feel uncomfortable when the help, and I'm, I don't mean to say that in a derogatory way, but that's how a lot of these celebrities consider these folks who work for them. They consider them the help. Oh, the fuck this, this, this with my fucking razor looking like this underneath. Please take this hey, shit. Get the fucking shit up there. I'm right, with I you. I'm know. agreeing with you, no, China. I no, said, I let's go. I said it five times. I gave you extra time. I made it so that your hair and makeup can be with you so you feel comfortable. I'm trying to make sure that you're as comfortable as fucking possible. First, she stopped yelling at her, though. I can't work for somebody who's working against me. Am I working against you? So, so I made this shit. The fuck? Made me? Made me? Bitch, I have a, I have a 2,700 square foot office. I don't have to deal with this bullshit. I don't even know how much fucking time we have. Not honestly, I don't care because I will call Wendy and call all the bullshit off. I don't need this. I don't have to deal with this. I have people who treat me with motherfucking respect. Get my shit. I'm going home and I'm canceling the motherfucking. If y'all have to work for that bitch. No. So when the help starts, you know trying to build up their fan base and they start getting just as many followers as you have based off of you, it starts to make certain celebrities feel away. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is, you know, Meg's issue with EJ, but I've seen this time and time again, where a lot of times, you know, people will get an opportunity to get put on, the celebrity shots them out. Now they're building their following and they're so focused on building up their brand. You know, now they want to have their own hairline, their own clothing line, their own makeup line. So now they're trying to do all this, but I initially hired you to be my hairstylist. I hired you to be my nail tech. And now you're spending more time, you know, being the celebrity on Instagram than doing what you're supposed to do for me. And I think that's where a lot of the conflict comes in at, okay? So that's one part of the equation for me. But I do feel like EJ, you know, I thought he handled this interview pretty well. But again, it does come off like you're still kind of chasing fame because we've all moved on. It's now November. All this went down October 12th, and here we are a month later. Now you're, re, you know, bringing it back up. So I see why folks are giving him the side eye. Another thing I want to hit on, because y'all not like to go deep, okay? Um, one thing I've noticed about Megan, I've said this before and people got offended and I didn't care, but I feel like Megan has issues with alcohol. I've said that months ago. Even before the whole Tory Lane situation, she seems to be somebody who promotes you know, excessive drinking. There's nothing wrong with drinking. I'm not here to monitor what grown folks do. As long as you're over the age of 21, you can do what you want to do. But even that whole, you know, drive the boat thing that she was pushing last summer or the summer before last made me uncomfortable because while you're telling young girls to drive the boat and you have them, you know, drinking straight up Hennessy and maybe you can handle it because you have security around you and, you know, people, you know, in your circle who are not going to let you, you know, fall into the wrong hands and possibly be sexually assaulted. A lot of young girls don't have that. You know, so if all these young girls out here driving the boat and just getting drunk out their mind, that leads ways to assault, kidnappings and all types of crazy stuff. Right. That's where my mind goes. I'm sorry. So that bothered me with every time you saw her with somebody, she was always trying to get them drunk. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy. Why my lip Easy. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I'm not supposed to say this. Rock your phone, that shit is legendary. Oh, I said I'm stallion. Guzzle up, guzzle up, baby girl. Ooh, yeah, take that thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then the night that everything happened with the whole Kylie thing and I'm um, Tori and all them, you could tell she was drunk there on camera because even Kylie was like, oh, you know, you're turning on the live. And she's like, yeah. And then she was kind of arguing a little bit with Tori, like, don't drop my phone. You could tell she was kind of agitated. I feel like she does have issues with alcohol. She drinks a lot. She promotes drinking. Even when she would do her live streams, there's always liquor there. OK, and maybe that's to numb the pain because of the things that she's been through. Or maybe she just likes to have a good damn time. Either way, I feel like there's a lot of excessive drinking. Even at Cardi B's party, her and Cardi were both drunk out their mind. You know, and I feel like she's the type of person when she gets drunk, she cannot handle her liquor. Most people can, male or female. When people get to a certain point when they're really, really drunk, everybody cannot handle their liquor. That's why even for me, there's only certain people I will go out with and kick it with. If you cannot handle your liquor, I will never fuck with you again. Because you're not going to put me in a situation where I go to have a good time, but because you're drunk and you want to turn up, now we're fighting. And I don't broke my heel because of your foolishness. You know, so a lot of times... People who don't know how to handle their liquor, they find themselves in crazy situations. And I feel like that's what happened with this situation with Megan EJ, where she has liquid courage in her because she's drunk. And now she's trying to confront him and and fight him and step to him. And then on top of that, like I said, she seems to have fallen off with a lot of the people that she felt was closest to her. EJ, Kelsey, you know, Kelsey's out here now throwing shots and doing little live streams that make absolutely no sense. Um, so it's a lot of mess. But I also want to touch on this. I also want to kind of get spiritual about the situation. Um, why I feel like not just Meg, but just people in general tend to have issues with alcohol. OK, what a lot of people don't understand is alcohol is a gateway to the spiritual world. OK, that is why they call alcohol spirits. And I know a lot of y'all ain't ready for that conversation. And a lot of y'all probably gonna click off the video and that's fine. But I really believe in that. That when people get drunk, when they get to a certain point, you're inviting low vibrational spirits into you via the alcohol. OK, and that's why a lot of times when people are drunk, the first thing they want to do is fight. They want to argue. They want to, you know, get real belligerent. They do things that when they're in their sober mind that they would not do. That is because alcohol helps to make you uninhibited. In return, because it's making you feel uninhibited and, you know, you're feeling fun and, you know, you're feeling invincible. You're letting down not only your physical guards, but your spiritual guards. And it is welcoming spirits into you. OK, and I'm not saying every time I'm just saying when people are constantly drinking or when you get there's one thing to have like a glass of wine or one thing to have a wine cooler or even just a shot. But when people I'm talking about are drunk excessively, constantly, you know, they're inviting those spirits into them. I want you guys to go ahead and just watch this quick video. I'm not going to post a whole lot, but this just kind of tells you the history of um, alcohol and spirituality. Although it is mass produced, mass promoted, legal, and ingested by a multitude of people all over the world, most people don't ever consider or understand the spiritual consequences of drinking alcohol. Let's begin by taking a look at the etymology of the word alcohol. Etymology means the root of the word. Where does its origins begin? The word alcohol comes from the Arabic alcohol, which means body-eating spirit and gives root origins to the English term for ghoul. In Middle Eastern folklore, a ghoul is an evil demon thought to eat human bodies either as stolen corpses or as children. By consuming alcohol into the body, it in effect extracts the very essence of the soul, allowing the body to be more susceptible to neighboring entities, most of which are of low frequencies. Why do you think we call certain alcoholic beverages spirits? That is why people who consume excessive amounts of alcohol often black out, not remembering what happened. 
essentially when someone goes dark after drinking alcohol or polluting themselves in many other ways, their body often becomes possessed by another entity. All right, so you guys just saw that video. So like I said, you know, this whole year, this whole 2020 has been a spiritual manifestation of a lot of things, right? So, you know, what I want is for everyone to just be careful. Be careful with the things that you consume. Be careful with the things that you put your energy towards. And this also goes for Megan. You know, to just be careful. You know, have good people around you. Have good people surround you. And, you know, take time to have clarity. Take time to get away from the internet. Take time to take a break. Take time to refresh. Take time to fast. Take time to cleanse. You know what I'm saying? We are dealing with a lot of, you know, crazy things this year. You don't want to open yourself to things that you may not be ready for. You know, so... I just hope they end up being able to, you know, just be professional, go their own separate ways. They don't have to be friends. They never have to hang out again. But, you know, just keep it professional. Let Meg do her and continue to make her music. EJ, you do you and continue to do your fashion brand or whatever you're trying to work on. You know what I'm saying? And let it go. I just hope this whole situation doesn't cause a whole bunch of more drama for her and negativity because she is going through enough with everything that's going on between her and Tori. So anyways, you guys, let's go ahead and get the discussion popped. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning EJ and Meg Thee Stallion. Did you know that they had drama? Did you know that this went down at Cardi B's birthday party? And then how do you feel about everything? Do you feel like EJ's being messy by bringing this up a month later? Do you agree with me that Meg possibly has issues with alcohol where she's not able to handle her liquor once she gets drunk? And then how do you guys feel about alcohol and spirits? You know what I'm saying? Do you believe that alcohol and, you know, what they call spirits, liquor, things like that can can be a gateway to invite certain things in so let me know your thoughts on everything don't forget to hit the subscribe button make sure you thumbs up the video last but not least don't forget to share and also hit that notification bell so we can be down with the notification squad honey so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces